Do those guys want to come in? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, President Luker, members of the board. Um, thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. It's a very special night where we are swearing in another member of our command staff, Lieutenant Tom Scott. Before I read his intro, I'd ask uh, Tom if you could please come up and uh, face your family. <laughs> or, so a uh, little bio on Lieutenant Tom Scott has been a member of our police department since 1997. Prior to coming to Abington, Tom was a, par a paramedic and the battalion chief with the Second Alarmers Rescue Squad. Lieutenant Scott was born and raised in East Oak Lane section of Philadelphia and graduated from St. Joseph's Prep. Tom has a bachelor's degree in science in health science from the University of the Sciences and a master's degree in public safety manage management from St. Joseph's University. Lieutenant Scott is a graduate of the Northwestern University School of Staff and Command, and he holds a certificate in municipal leadership from Penn State University. <coughs> Lieutenant Scott also attained his basic level certification in the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Program and is working on his professional level certification. Tom has served in the patrol division for his entire career. He was promoted to sergeant in 2011, and during this time in the patrol division, he has served as a field training officer, a firearms instructor, a taser instructor, a DARE officer, a less lethal impact munitions instructor, and expandable baton instructor. He's also served on several committees throughout his career, um, which include, excuse me here, uh, school safety committee, training, uh, training committee, the master police officer committee, and the firearms selection committee. Lieutenant Scott has been a member of our SWAT team, our tactical unit, since 2008, where he served as a team medic and also as a team leader. Tom has been a coordinator of our community response team since its inception in 2016 and is also the coordinator of our firearms training program. He is currently the platoon commander for B Platoon and is a deputy emergency management coordinator for Abington Township. In this capacity, Lieutenant Tom Scott and Tom McEnany have taken on the monumental task of coordinating our active shooter response safety program for every school in the township. Lieutenant Scott is proud of his lifetime in public service, something that he attributes to his fine Jesuit education and the ideals that he learned as a young man at St. Joseph's Prep. In his spare time, Lieutenant Scott coaches and is on the board of directors for the St. Genevieve CYO program in Flowertown. And his most important dedication that he um, wanted me to talk about is his dedication to his family. He is joined here by his Valentine's sweetheart <laughs> and his wife of 21 years, Michelle. They met at what was the school scoreboard, but is now the vintage, back in 1995. <laughs> and also with their son, TJ. Now I'd like to ask uh, TJ to come up with the Bible, and we're very happy that Judge Kessler can join us this evening to swear in Lieutenant Tom Scott. Lieutenant Scott, uh, please repeat after me. After I say I, please state your name. I. I, Thomas Scott. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution and the laws. The Constitution and the laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Township of Abington. And the Township of Abington. That I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, the duties of my office as a lieutenant for Abington Township, as a lieutenant for Abington Township, and will obey the rules and regulations, and will obey the rules and regulations, policies and procedures, policies and procedures governing all sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department, governing all sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Thank you.
we have a tradition. If um, Michelle could come up and pin on his lieutenant's badge, please. President Luker and uh, commissioners, I really appreciate the opportunity tonight. Um, it's, uh, I'm truly humbled to be here tonight uh, as part of the command staff and uh, part of the leadership for moving forward into the next generation of uh, our police department. Obviously, uh, when Chief Kelly and uh, Chief Livinggood uh, left us, we uh, lost a lot of seniority and a lot of experience. Uh, but we're, we're now moving into the next level of uh, our generation. Um, we're moving um, with a lot of young officers, and we're trying to train them the culture and the the mission, which is obviously we're different here in Abington, and uh, we, we take our pride as a, as a serious part of our culture. So I'd like to thank you for that opportunity, and I want to thank a few people that are here with me tonight. Obviously, uh, my brothers, I have four brothers. Uh, my brother Jim, he's the oldest, John, Kev, Joe, and their wives, uh, Robin, <laughs> Kathy, and Chris. Uh, my other sister-in-law, Mary, is obviously in Harrisburg. My brother came all the way from Harrisburg for tonight, so I really appreciate that. I also want to send out uh, two of my good buddies from uh, the Class 426 Northwestern, uh, Chuck Pinkerton, who's the official class photographer. That's why he has to be here tonight. And uh, Mike Mosniak. Uh, and most importantly is my colleagues and friends uh, from the police department and retired, obviously, Steve, Steve Hockman and his wife, Deb. And uh, the most important people in the room right now are my son and my wife, Michelle. Thank you. This time we'll have a brief intermission before we move to the next agenda item. At this time I have a presentation and I'd like to call on Commissioner Dennis Sapone. And Commissioner Carol Gillespie. <laughs> Folks, I think everybody here knows Woody. Woody, I want to commend you on your 50 years of service to the school district and your dedication not only to the school district, but the township and especially to the children. And I know this day John Fox will be smiling down on you. John Woody McGoldrick, the Abington Township Board of Commissioners in celebration of your 50 years of dedicated service to the Abington Township School District, and in celebration you as a loyal and tireless supporter of our community. And as the Abington Ghost number one fan, we recognize John Woody McGoldrick. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, really? This is a surprise from the township. And I'm just shocked. Thank you very much. Mary Jane Burns and Danny Burns is here with me tonight. And I don't know if you guys know, it's uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> and I wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day from Mr. Woody from Abington High School. Yeah. <laughs> I 
actually he called me at what, 6.30? Yes. Wish me a happy Valentine's Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. At this time, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Township of Abington's Board of Commissioners meeting for Thursday, February the 14th, 2019. And may we have a roll call, please. Here. 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 May everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, there are no board president announcements since Commis Commissioner Spiegelman is here. And at this time, we're going to consider filling the vacancy for the unexpired term on the Board of Commissioners for Commissioner Departing Ben Sanchez. We have a resolution number 19-005, so first I'll entertain a motion to appoint a commissioner to fill the vacancy presented as a result of Commissioner Ben Sanchez leaving the Board of Commissioners effective this evening, February 14, 2019. Can I can... Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, President Luker. I'd like to make a nomination to appoint Stu Weingard to fill the spot uh, vacated by Commissioner Ben Sanchez. Second. Is there a second? It's been moved and second. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. No, no, that's it. Okay. Do. Close the nominations. That was the adoption of the resolution. Yeah. Yes, yep. Okay, so I'll read the resolution, which reads as follows. A resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Abington to fill a vacancy on the Board of Commissioners for Ward 7. And now this 14th day of February 2019, pursuant to section 530 of the Pennsylvania First Class Code, Township Code, 53PS55530, the Board of Commissioners does hereby resolve as follows. Mr. Stuart Weingrad, having been a resident of Ward 7 of the Township of Abington for a period in excess of one year, is hereby appointed to fill the vacancy on the Board of Commissioners created by the resignation of Commissioner Ben Sanchez, whose resignation is effective today, February 14, 2019. I hereby certify that this resolution was adopted by the Township of Abington at its public meeting held on the 14th day of February, 2019, and I sign off as President of the Board of Commissioners. So at this time, is um, Chief Justice Gail Weinheimer here? <laughs> I, Thank you. The last time I got the name, but not this time. You all the time, I shouldn't forget the name, but I really must love you all to spend Valentine's Day with you. So with that, Mr. Weinberg, come forward. Are you getting with you or just you? Okay, you want to come forward or you want to stay there? It's up Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state I, your name. I, Stuart Weingrass. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. 
and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And that I will perform the duties of my office. And I will perform the duties of my office. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, because I think, hey, don't go anywhere. I think you usually have people who introduce their family, so I'll. Mr. Weingrad, would you introduce your family, please? And Can I have any excuse? Yes, Judge. Thank you. Gail Weihammer, thank you very much for your presence. Thank you. <laughs> Stuart? Thank you, President Luger. Uh, if I could introduce my wife, Renee, my son, Miles, uh, my daughter, Erica, and my daughter, uh, Iris, all of them. Uh, go to Abington School District and are very happy that they don't have school tomorrow. Very good. <laughs> With that, Mr. Weingrad, please join us. And we thank the family of newly appointed Commissioner Stuart Weingrad for joining us this evening. At this time, we're going to have a public hearing on resolution number 19-006. So at this time, I'd like to open the hearing for resolution number 19-006, and I'd like to turn it over to solicitor, <coughs> our solicitor, uh, Mr. Um, Oh, I forget his name. For Mike, Michael Clark is not here this evening, so filling in for him is his able companion, <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Gallagher. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a public hearing for liquor license transfer application to transfer re restaurant liquor license number R13874 from the municipality of Upper Dublin Township, Montgomery County, into Abington Township. The applicant is Movie Grill Concepts, XLIII LLC. The property which is the subject of this hearing is the uh, Willow Grove Park Mall at 2500 West Moreland Avenue, Abington Township. The hearing is being held for purposes of receiving comments and recommendations of interested individuals residing within the municipality concerning the applicant's intent to transfer a liquor license into the municipality of Abington Township. This application, which was submitted by Ellen Freeman of Flaherty and O'Hara, was received by the Township on November 14, 2018. The Pennsylvania Liquor Code requires that the Township render a decision within 45 days of the submission, or in the alternative, with an additional 60 days at the Township's election with a written notice to the applicant. My office notified the applicant's attorney of the Township's intent to hold the hearing on the application this evening, which is within the statutory time limits. We have reviewed and found the application to be substantially complete. The Pennsylvania Liquor Code sets forth certain mandatory provisions with respect to the processing of applications for intermunicipal transfers of liquor licenses. The transfer of a license must first be approved by the governing body of the receiving municipality when the total number of existing restaurant liquor licenses and eating place retail dispenser licenses in the receiving municipality equals or exceeds one liquor license per 3,000 inhabitants. We have contacted the quota department of the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, and they have confirmed that Abington Township has in excess of one license per 3,000 residents. The Liquor Code further states that upon request for an intermunicipal transfer, at least one public hearing shall be held by the municipal governing body for the purpose of receiving comments and recommendations of interested individuals residing within the municipality concerning the applicant's intent to transfer a license into the municipality. Accordingly, the Pennsylvania Liquor Co Control Board may not approve a new license unless the township first holds a public hearing and approves the intermunicipal transfer application. The township is required to render its decision by resolution or ordinance, and we provided for the board this evening a copy of a resolution approving the transfer and a copy of a resolution denying the transfer. The application has been advertised consistent with the Liquor Code on January 30th, 2019 and February 6th, 2019. The applicant is represented here this evening by Ellen Freeman. Uh, Ms. Freeman, you will now have the opportunity to present the application, any information or evidence you would like, and any testimony you would like, and then make yourself available, and if you have any witnesses here with you this evening, make them available for any questions from any members of the public that request party status during this hearing. Do you understand this process, Ms. Freeman? I do. Okay, you may proceed. I also have with me here this evening Jim Medulla, he 
He is the Vice President and General Counsel of Studio Movie Girl. came all the way up from Florida this evening to join us. So if there's any questions that I'm unable to answer, um, he'll be able to step in and answer them for you. You may be familiar with Studio Movie Girl as it was in front of Abington Township, I think at the beginning of 2018 for a conditional use hearing. Um, there haven't been any substantial changes, so a lot of what went on in that hearing um, will be present um, in their current plans today. I also may be referencing as it as it as, it as SMG instead of Studio Movie Girl, just in case you hear me say that. And this, uh, this location would be in the old J.C. Penney location in the Willow Grove Mall. That's at 2500 West Moreland Road. And SMG does have one other liquor license in Pennsylvania. It's located in Upper Darby. And they also have 30 liquor licenses in nine other states. Um, so they do have vast operations with liquor license sales. Um, if you've been to the one in the Upper Darby location, you'll be able to gauge how Studio Movie Girl does operate their theaters. It's a little bit different than the typical movie theater. Um, but the facade and the, the development of this particular theater will differ a little bit from the Upper Darby location. Upper Darby was a redevelopment project, and this one will have a new facade um, and some updated interior um, modeling as well, which I'll show you a picture of as well. Um, now, it is a national trend for movie theaters to obtain liquor licenses these days. Um, movie theaters, much like other businesses, have to deal with a lot of technological competition, um, and we're seeing more and more at-home movie options at consumers' fingertips. And so movie theaters have felt the, the hit of things like Netflix and Hulu because it's an at-home comfort that consumers can, can have at their fingertips. And so they've really, movie theaters have turned to their concessions in order to bridge, bridge the gap and to make themselves relevant again. So SMG is striving to be a one-stop entertainment facility, to be that ultimate dinner and a movie experience for their consumers. Um, and that experience for many adults does include an alcoholic beverage. Now, as I mentioned previously, SMG does have other liquor licenses that they operate, so this will not be their first. And what they've been able to do is they've been able to track trends at their other movie theaters. And what they've found is that most adults who are consuming alcoholic beverages in their movie theaters are averaging at about two alcoholic beverages. Um, there are a number of factors for that, but the main factor is the movie is still the main attraction. Um, a snack, a meal, an alcoholic beverage, that might be connected to a cinema experience for some individuals, but the primary focus is still um, to see what's playing on the big screen. Traditionally, movie theaters are considered a family-friendly environment, and SMG is not trying to change that by adding an alcohol license to um, their premises. Um, they're still going to cater a lot of their operations to children. You'll be able, you're able to um, host a birthday party for your child um, at certain locations within SMG. Uh, they also, they've been recognized for this innovative approach, which I thought was brilliant, um, and I wanted Bo to mention it this evening, um, that they've been recognized for this approach of addressing special needs children. So several Saturdays out of the year, SMG will have a movie screening for special needs children where the lights are not dimmed, the music and the sound is turned down in order to accommodate um, any of those behaviors, and then all behaviors of children are welcome during this movie screening. Um, and it's a way to bring everyone together and ha allow them to have that cinema experience as well. Further, SMG institutes a policy that if a movie is scheduled to play after 7 p.m., uh, any individual under the age of 18 must be accompanied by an adult. SMG does go to great lengths to protect their alcohol sales. Um, responsible service is the utmost importance of SMG, and they have employed a variety of tactics in order to ensure that their sales are done in a safe and legal manner. Before I go into their operations, I do want to pass out what we're going to label as Applicants Exhibit A. The exhibit uh, is consisting of three sheets of paper. The first is an image of the outside of the theater, so what the facade is proposed to look like. And then the second two pages are the lower and upper level, respectively, of the floor plan of the proposed theater.
The construction of the movie theater is slated for later this year with a proposed opening in November. There will be 12 theaters in total and 1,288 theater seats. And once you have the floor plan in front of you, if you want to take a look at the second page, which is the lower level of the movie theater, I've highlighted a section of the upper right-hand corner. Um, this is where the most activity is taking place. This is the ticket counter, the bar area, as well as the lounge area. Um, so that's where a lot of my presentation will focus this evening. The theater will serve a variety of food options. There's a brunch menu, so they have breakfast quesadillas, omelet pizzas, pancakes, and more. And then the theater will have their traditional um, menu items, such as you know, your appetizers, pizza, burger, wings. Um, they have a very vast menu, which I think you got to take a look at in their conditional use hearing packet. You can either sit in the lounge area at the bar seating, or you can sit at your theater seat and to order food and consume that food. So there's many options when you go. Either you can dine in prior to the movie or you can dine while you watch the movie. SMG will sell handcrafted cocktails, wine, and beer. There are no pitchers of beer or, and there are no shareable drinks. So each drink is bought on an individual level and each person who buys a drink must be carded by an associate. So they have a 100% carding policy and individuals are not permitted to buy more than one drink at a time. So each time someone has to be carded in order for them to purchase a drink. So there's not an option to go up and get to and be able to give it to your fellow moviegoer. Um, everyone has to be carded. Each of the associates will be RAMP trained. I know you're pretty familiar with RAMP, but that's the Responsible Alcohol Management Program. Um, so this program will teach each of the associates how to properly card, how to spot a fake ID, how to spot um, a minor with an adult who's purchasing alcohol, and how to handle each of those scenarios. Um, on top of that, SMG has an internal training um, that associates must go through. And it's a very extensive training. It goes over not only the ramp training, but also their internal policies. Um, one of the reasons they have such a vast training is because a lot of the times consumer or the patrons come in and they want to eat and dine during the movie, which is an option. So when you do go into um, the movie and sit down, there is a red button in front of you. And if you wish to purchase um, a beverage or a meal, um, you press that red button and a server will come in um, while the movie is playing. So they're taught how to be discreet and they're taught how to be quiet and they're taught how to use each of their tactics to make sure that they're not disrupting anyone's um, movie experience. Now I did mention um, at the beginning of my presentation that SMG is a little bit different than your typical movie theater. They have a 100% reservation policy. So when you, you can go online and you can choose which movie you're going to go to and purchase your tickets and select your seats online. Um, and so each seat is numbered and when you go in, you don't have to find a seat anywhere because you've already reserved one online. Um, you can also go up to the ticket counter and buy a ticket as well if it's a last minute decision. Um, but each seat has a number and each, each person who's in that seat has bought that particular numbered seat. There are different cups for each of the beverages. Um, so, you know, there won't be any mistakes of a soda pop drink looking like a beer drink. So each of the cups, you know, the, the draft beer cup will look one way, the mixed drink cup will look another way, the wine cup will look a third way, and that way SMG Associates can pinpoint um, who's drinking what, and if, and if someone looks like they shouldn't have that alcoholic beverage in hand, they can take the necessary procedure to either card that individual again or make sure that they don't have it in front of them. They have a projected forecast for this location of, of serving 525,000 guests. Um, that's their projected for this particular location based on um, the other locations and based on the area itself. They will have 150 to 200 employees at any given time. Usually it depends on the season when they'll have the most, the peak amount of employees. Um, and most of those employees are part-time, but there will be eight to 10 full-time positions. Um, and of course, a manager who will manage the, manage the entire theater. Um, with that, that's all I have for you today on the information. If there's any questions, please let me know. Again, Jim's here too, if there's any questions for him. Okay.
Any commissioners' questions? Um, Tommy Bowman. Tom Bowman and then Matt Vahey. Hi. Uh, the uh, source of this liquor license, in, at one point it's identified as Upper Darby and then at other points Upper Dublin. Is it Upper Dublin? Let me take a look here. <coughs> it is Upper Dublin. Is that the address on Lime Kiln? Yes. What is that? In Dresher? Is that a, is that a place? Do you, know, do you know what that facility was? <laughs> I don't. Closed bar? <laughs> yeah, I would assume it's a closed bar. That's all, thanks. Okay. Yeah, they'll invite you in for last call. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Vahey. Uh, you, you said the location is going to serve 525,000 guests? That's correct. Annually, or what period? That's their projected in their first annual year, yes. Okay. And you said it's still slated to open in November of this year? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Klein, Vice President Klein. And did I hear you right? You said after, after 7 p.m., anybody under 18 will have to be accompanied by adult, regardless, That's correct. Of, regardless of the rating of the movie? That's correct. And has Studio Movie, Movie Grill ever received any kind of violations or notice of violations from any uh, liquor uh, control agency in any state that they have licenses? They have not in, in Pennsylvania. They have in some of their other locations in another state. Um, I think at most there have been two. And, and what was the nature of those? Do you know? I do believe they were sales to minors. Sales to minors? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Myers. Uh, just a comment, not, not a question. Uh, I really don't remember, as long as I've been commissioner, uh, that the public, that the residents have been so excited about the new business coming in. Uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised how many people have asked for it to be finished, that they're excited, and uh, I'm sure that we're going to be a wonderful addition to the new We're really in more that's great to hear. Thank you. Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, thank you. Along, along the same lines, there is, there is no possibility at all of opening earlier than November. It's not going to happen. I'm afraid not. Gonna gonna not. <laughs> all right. I can dream. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Schreiber. The um, alcoholic beverages, you had mentioned that there's going to be like morning movies with brunch and things like that. Are there, is there a time that the alcohol is, and you might have said it, and I apologize if you had said that, but is there all day and evening, or is it not served in the morning? Or No, and I, I didn't state it, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, they do have their brunch items, so they have brunch cocktails. They're per permitted to sell as early as 7 a.m. I don't believe any of their movies are going to be that early. Um, I, I, would, I would venture to guess that they're not going to be any earlier than 10, 10 or, or 11. Mm -hmm. But they will be serving alcohol at that time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other commissioners' comments or questions? Um, any from staff? Any comments or questions from residents? Hold on a second. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I, I know somebody's vice chairman of a, public, a, a private club and also an owner of a restaurant chain in New Jersey. And they both put money into a pot annually. And if they find that one of their customers is inebriated, they can send that customer home in an Uber or a Lyft with no charge to that customer. Do you people do anything like that? Jim, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, Could you come to come the microphone, sure, please? Sure. Hi, it's, uh, Jim Thank Gadula. You. Jim Gadula, it's uh, Gia Zangari, D is in David, U-L-A, G-D-U-L-A, yeah, proud Penn Stater, so, uh, um, and, and Duquesne Law School. So um, what we do is we don't do, we just do it. I mean, if somebody, if one of our staff sees somebody's inebriated, we just go call you an Uber or Lyft and have them taken home. We don't, don't even fool around with it, so it's... It's not, we don't have, want to have the problem. And with respect to the two violations, they spot, they, we've been in business for 20, 25 years, and two in 25 years is uh, you know, a pretty good average, I think. Uh, we really are um, very um, concerned about underage drinking and, and take, a, take a really tough stance on that. Can I uh, follow up on that? Sure, go ahead. So yeah. can you, uh, how long ago were those violations, and what, um, what Policies or procedures has well, one, one Studio. Was in, one, let me finish my question. Oh, sure. Did Studio Movie Grill um, put into place uh, to try to combat that in the future? Well, um, the one, I, the one I recall, uh, the, both of them were in Texas. 
Okay. And both of them were pursuant to a re, uh, to a undercover you know, uh, a process. And um, we, how long ago? Uh, the most recent one was probably three years ago, huh. and the one before that was like ten years ago. So, um, and what we did, we we called in everybody, and retrained everybody uh, from uh, after that incident, and to make sure it never happened again. So. And is that a policy you have not just in Texas, but in all your all your locations yes, we, yeah, in every go, state? Yeah, Yes, it is, sir. Yes, and we all, we retra we retrain annually with our with our servers um, to make sure that they're up to date with the new procedures and laws. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from commissioners or staff? Okay, thank you to the applicant. Any comments or questions from residents? So, in case there's any resident comments. None. Nope. Again, any questions from commissioners? All right, hearing none. Close the hearing. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Okay. Motion to approve the liquor license R13874 into the Township of Abington from Upper Dublin Township, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. That closes the hearing. Okay. Okay. I've been requested to take a five minute recess at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to make an announcement. It was brought to my attention by council that when we filled the unexpired term on the Board of Commissioners uh, with Commissioner Stuart Weingrad, I uh, uh, made a mistake and did not take public comment. So at this time, I'd like to retract that nomination and that vote and ask for public comment on the appointment of Stuart Weingrad to fill the vacancy on the Board of Commissioners for Ward 7 in the Township of Abington. Are there any public comment at this time? President Luker, just a matter of housekeeping. Um, if there, it, it is being <laughs> opened back up to uh, public comment, but um, the revote would only be necessary if there were um, okay. public comments that were made. Thank you. Laura Lehman, 1431 <coughs> Bryant Lane, and welcome, Mr. Weingrad. Um, we wish you well and hope you wish us well. <laughs> so we, uh, I, um, I think uh, it, it's pretty well known here that there is a great amount of displeasure at Commissioner Sanchez having served straight through to this point and, and just having voted when he was already sworn in January 1st. So had we needed a Ward 7 commissioner, which we did, you're very much needed, um, we needed him in time to be the commissioner for, for that group of people and to do the voting. I'd like to try to understand how Article 6, Section 2 of the Constitution that prohibits somebody from serving two jobs. Um, commissioner Sanchez was only elected to a job that came with uh, the fees and benefits and perks that he had. He, he didn't stop that job and then get reelected to another job with no fees. So I don't think you can just say, well, I'm not taking any pay today so I can do whatever I want to do and break the law. The Constitution is something that he took an oath to defend and to obey. And I'd like to understand in clear terms how that happened, uh, that he was still serving and that you didn't appoint somebody sooner. Okay, if I may defer to counsel for an answer. Does she don't want her comment? Uh, certainly, the, the commissioner, uh, former Commissioner Sanchez is uh, serving in the House uh, with a slight overlap in the township was not a violation of, the, of any law in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. What, what, could she read the, uh, perhaps Ms. Gallagher could read the uh, Article 2 section, uh, Article 6, Section 2 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. Uh, I, I, all of you know it. You, you, 
I know you all okay, know Okay, hold this. on. That's uh, her prerogative. I think she gave you an answer, and I think that's all she's entitled to do. Commissioner Myers, did you have a question? Uh, well, not a question, just a statement. Um, if memory serves me correctly, and I'm pretty sure it does, that uh, now Congresswoman Madeline Dean, when she was commissioner and then was elected to the State House, that she remained commissioner for, I think, about two months. Uh, it was her intention to stay commissioner. However, she soon realized that time-wise, it was not possible. Uh, there are in the state other state reps who have maintained um, their municipal position. It is not illegal. So well, it, okay. if you read the Constitution, it appears to be. Okay, okay excuse me. Commissioner Spiegel. Um, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, corroborate uh, uh, Commissioner Meyer's uh, memory. I mean, and there, there, are, there are various examples of, of, uh, of people serving um, at the municipal and, and other levels. Um, for instance, here, you know, here in Montgomery County, we have a recorder of deeds who also serves as the mayor of Ambler Borough and does an excellent job at both jobs. So it's, again, to reiterate, not illegal. Okay, okay thank you. That's the end of the conversation. It's been answered, and so we that's can't it. get the solicitor to read the that article. Gave, no, she that answered article it, and that's all she's obligated to do. That says that you may not serve a second uh, job that comes with fees and benefits, and that's what he was elected to. No, the answer the was given by the solicitor the that the everything was in order. So we'll take it as that, and Thank that's you. the end of the so, conversation. So Thank that's you. part Thank of you. what we were talking about last Thank time: you. is everything's not in order. The other thing. Thank you. I, I, Hold on, hold on. Excuse I think me. the chair of the meeting Thank is you. running the Go meeting. Go ahead. Mr. You have Klein. another comment? Make it brief. You have uh, one minute. Yes. Yeah, so the, the other question I had is, um, were, how many uh, uh, candidates did you interview for the job, for the Ward 7 job? I don't think we do need to answer that. It's, it's done. It's over with. And the gentleman is appointed and seated, and it's over. He's been sworn in, so, so that's the end of the conversation. We're not allowed to know how many candidates appeared and how many you interviewed? No. No. Nope. Well, no. Nope. Thank you. All right, at this time, I'd like to call on Vice President wow. Stephen Klein for public comment. I'm sorry, the consent agenda and approval of the minutes. I'm going to ask for public comment. I'm afraid first. All right, at this time, hold on. Before we move to that, I'd like to take public comment at this time first, before we move to the consent agenda. President Luker, if I can interject, um, because there was public comment, um, albeit um, I'm not entirely sure whether it had to do with uh, the selection of the particular candidate, but it would be appropriate to just um, take a, to redo the vote that was taken earlier, redo just to vote? confirm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just call for a motion okay. on the resolution okay. appointing. President right. Luker, I'd like to make a nomination to uh, appoint Stuart Weingrad for, to fill the term, um, Ward 7 Commissioner Ben Sanchez. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. My apologies. Thank you, Council. At Thank this you. time, public comment, please. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. So um, the, the, the number of things that are wrong in this township just were evident right in that short conversation. Uh, the people that you are serving are having information withheld from them, are having uh, trouble getting just simple responses, simple responses. Um, and uh, I think we've, uh, we talked last time about conflicts of interest. And uh, I was told that, uh, that nobody turns their head on conflicts of interest in this township. In fact, we have so many of those. And it isn't just conflicts of interest. It's also outright corruption in a lot of different ways. Corruption is when the process isn't right and so the outcome has been skewed. And we saw that with the BET hearing. And we just saw the um, solicitor who, when I said there had been perjury, and I believe strongly that there was perjury in that hearing. Layman, uh, you're not an attorney. I'm not an attorney. Just be careful. I, but I can read the law, okay? And so it, it, clearly the solicitor said that perjury is only in a court setting. 
It, 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 clearly, it is not. The Pennsylvania statute clearly says if you're under oath in a, an official proceeding, such as a court setting, and I deserve a response and, and an apology from the solicitor, not getting one shows that that was intended slander, intended to marginalize me, intended to discredit me, and very similar to what is done constantly here, okay, with the smiling face there. This, this uh, kind of behavior is um, unbelievable for a, a group of people that are supposed to be serving the residents. Um, the, the conflicts of interest that I mentioned, Commissioner Myers can get somebody else from PAL. She doesn't have to do that from the dais. You didn't have, you could have excused yourself from giving your son $100,000 of services. Th those kinds of things should not happen. And those are simple things. The really big conflicts uh, happen. And some, one of the things that just happened recently is we had a conditional use hearing. Okay, and the fire. Your three minutes are up. You've covered all these items at the previous committee meeting. So do you have something you want to wrap it up with? Because your three minutes are up. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up quickly with there was no fire marshal, no fire marshal report at that conditional use hearing where you have a building that can only be reached on three sides. And when we left the first part of the conditional use hearing, we were pretty sure we were going to come back and talk about the whole fire situation, but we didn't. We only talked about the little bridge. That's another dangerous thing waiting to happen. And the law says that the fire marshal, it's not his desire. What his desire is, is the law. And there are laws after laws after laws in the building code that say that. Okay, and thank this you. township needs to follow that. Thank you for your comments. Any other public comments? If there are none, I'd like to turn it over to Vice President Klein for approval of the minutes and for the approval of the consent agenda. Thank you, President Luker, and back to some reality. I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the consent agenda, items A through F, as listed on the agenda, and I so move. Second. The move and second it. Any comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. Thank you, Vice President Klein. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Drew Rothman, Chair of the Public Works Committee. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, we have one item on the Public Works Committee agenda this evening, PW01021419. It is a motion to award Kaharchik uh, Construction as the lowest responsible bidder and to authorize the township manager to execute the contract in the amount of $208,274.90 for construction of roadway and intersection improvements at Mount Carmel Avenue and North Hills Avenue as set forth in the bid specifications. And I so move. Second. It's been moved to second it. Comments from commissioners? Staff? Comment. Comment? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, just to reiterate what I said at the committee meetings, this is a pretty important project for us over in Ward 6. This is a pretty dicey intersection for us all to navigate and to uh, take a left turn at. And I would just ask my fellow commissioners for their support in uh, approving this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? Commissioner Bowman. Uh, just one question. That intersection is shared by a few townships. Is there other kick-ins from Springfield and Upper Dublin? That's uh, actually, if, if I may, I think that's actually all ours. Oh, oh, we're two ours. blocks past. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other comments from commissioners? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. Uh, that's the end of the uh, agenda for public works. Okay, as we continue in new business, I'd like to call on Commissioner Ken Brosky, Chair of the Administrative Code and Land Use Committee. Thank you, President Luker. Tonight we have the issue of appointing to the Zoning Hearing Board and the Planning Commission. I think we'll take those as two separate votes, is my understanding. And what I'd like to do for the moment is turn this over to Vice President Klein, as he was the head of the committee that conducted the interviews. So we'd like to hear recommendations and the thoughts from that committee. Thank you, Commissioner Brodsky. I'd like to start with the Zoning Hearing Board. Um, I'd like to, at this point, I would like to make a nomination to uh, appoint Barbara Wertheimer uh, to the Zoning Hearing Board for a new five-year term. Second. 
Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Hearing none, there's been moved and seconded to appoint Barbara Wertheimer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> the motion passes. And then for the Planning Commission, I would like to make a nomination to appoint, to appoint Dale Russell for a new term on the Abington Township Planning Commission. Second. Okay, before we take that vote, are there any other nominations for the Planning Commission? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? The motion passes. With that, with that being said, President Luker, I believe that concludes the business of the Administrative Code and Land Use Committee for this evening. Thank you, Vice President Thank Klein. Thank you, Commissioner Luker, and we move on. Thank you. Congratulations to Barbara Wertheimer and to Mr. Dale Russell. Thank you. Okay, next we'll move on to Public Safety Committee and turn it over to Commissioner Lori Schreiber, Chair. Thank you, President Luker. We have one agenda item this evening. It's a motion to advertise ordinance number 2164, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article two, traffic regulations, section 14, stop intersections, and article three, parking regulations, sections 25, parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, to add stop intersections on Lafayette Avenue, Cherokee Avenue, Morden Road, and Keswick Avenue, add no parking here to corner on Keswick Avenue, add no parking on Brown Avenue. All is set forth in the ordinance and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners, staff, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes our agenda this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Schreiber. <coughs> Vice President Stephen Klein, Commissioner, Stephen Klein, Chair of the Finance Committee is next. Thank you, President Luker, and I'd like to call on Township Treasurer Jay Blumenthal for the Treasurer's Report. Good evening, everyone. The monies deposited for the departmental various, for, excuse me, for the various departments of the Township for the month of January had a total of 1,924,134 as compared to last year's 1,609,459 with an increase of 314,675. Uh, as for the monies transferred over to the finance department for real estate taxes, since I don't send out the bills until February, there was none collected for January. And might I add that the uh, Township County bills were mailed out on February 8th. So for those of you who are here or for those of you who may be looking at it over the TV or the internet, <coughs> If you do not get your bill within the next couple of weeks, please contact my office. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Blumenthal. Um, I'd like also, before I get started on the, the two agenda items that need to be handled um, with the uh, with Commissioner or State Representative Sanchez moving moving on to the State House, um, I'd like to welcome uh, Commissioner Vahey as the as the Vice Chair for the Finance Committee, and welcome uh, Commissioner Weingrad for to be on the Finance Committee taking a Commissioner Sanchez's position. So with that, I have FC 02011519, motion to approve the December expenditures as previously circulated to the board in the amount of $3,383,620.69 and salaries and wages in the amount of $2,128,808.64 and authorizing the proper officials to sign vouchers in payment of bills and contracts as they mature through the month of March 2019. And I so move. Second. The move and second it. May we have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 We have FC 06021419. Considering motion to approve final payment in the amount of $12,070.20 to N and Albanizio contractors for the Mill Road Sewer District Project contract number 152 from the Sewer Capital Fund account number. 17-07-903-7330. The required one-year maintenance bond has been received, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 
And that concludes the Finance Committee's agenda for this evening. Thank you, Vice President Stephen Klein. At this time, that concludes our formal agenda, and I'll open the floor to public comment. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. Mr. Klein with the smirk on his face over the Commissioner fire. Klein. Excuse me, excuse me. Mr. Klein. Ms. Lehman. I don't we, have a Commissioner Ms. Klein. Ms. Lehman, can we yes. start the comments and not the name calling, but just address the chair, please. Thank you. Okay, so what we have is a situation where the same person who cost the township literally between hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars with his activity uh, you know, in the colonnade in 100 York. And 90% of that was about safety and the fire equipment. And a carefully orchestrated political theater at the conditional use hearing for the Baderwood Apartments, where we have a huge apartment complex with one side all unattainable by the fire equipment, and the public had a right to see what the fire department said about accessing that side. The questions had been asked. Instead, the, the carefully orchestrated theater went to the point of, of saying that this was the desire, not a regulation for the fire department to do that, even though the law says that what the fire marshal decides is the law and, and should be taken seriously. We have the same thing happening with people's lives are at stake with this kind of behavior. And so, the, you know, one of the things here is that three minutes is not enough to discuss this. I've asked all of you to discuss this in other places. So if you don't, if you're uncomfortable discussing it in public, let's talk about what we can do about changing this dynamic somewhere else, okay? But we can't seem to get that. We also have, um, and, and that's a serious issue, so I'll leave that as a serious issue. We also have uh, uh, the uh, issue of, you just appointed some people. Uh, one of them, for instance, works for urban engineers. This is what I was protesting before, is that we do not appoint people to our boards where their companies are involved in making business in the township. They, there are plenty of other things that they can do, other than be on the boards that actually vote on who gets the business. So I, I would like to say that. Um, Ms. Wertheimer has served very, very long. I've asked her to please help the people at the zoning hearing board get some kind of a primer so that we don't watch people come time after time and not know how the meeting goes. Okay, they don't understand that they have to ask the questions of just the expert and only what the expert said. So I'm asking you, Commissioner Luker, please to help with that. Please help get these things done and, and not let them just go on. The withheld documents that were completely withheld the whole time before the, up to the BET, BET hearing had been requisitioned November 15th. I still don't have them. Okay, and th that is tragic that we have that kind of behavior from our administration. That it, it's, it's, uh, it, should, it should be grounds for getting rid of somebody who's doing that, okay? Um, and the other thing is, this is the most simple, and I'll wrap it up. Thank you for Thank letting you. me speak. Uh, we have asked for 13 years for a plug accommodation for the camera. Tonight we were told we couldn't use that corner, and Mr. Manfredi actually came and grabbed the chair out of my hand, okay? The corner is free, number one, and number two, for 13 years we've asked for accommodation for a plug, not just where he puts it, because obviously the back of the room won't work, okay, but thank a you plug for your where, where we can please use the camera that would be good. Thank okay? you, any other public comments? Hearing none, we'll ask for closing comments from commissioners, starting with Commissioner Bowman. Um, welcome, uh, Commissioner Weingrad. Glad to have you aboard, and good luck to you. Uh, and uh, just to the residents in my ward, they should know that 2806 Turner, a fire-damaged house that's been a pain, is going to be demolished very shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Zappone. Thank you, Commissioner Gillespie. Uh, 
Just a couple things. First of all, the uh, Keep the Parade Running 5K run is coming up, so uh, you can go on the website, uh, Keep the Parade Running, or Glenside Patriotic Association. Also, happy birthday to Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. I wonder if anybody really realizes why they, they have a holiday coming. Uh, and um, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Commissioner Vahey, thank you. So it's that time of year again when Commissioner Gillespie and I have a friendly little competition to see who builds the best, biggest team for the 4th of July 5K race. So we're at it again. Um, you know, please sign up. Don't sign up with me or with Quinn Wilson, but uh, please come out. Uh, there's nothing greater in this township or in Glenside than the 4th of July parade, and we need all the uh, funds raised from this event to uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just want to remind everybody that on Saturday, the 23rd of February, there is an Anything with a Plug uh, recycling, uh, electronics recycling event at the Township Yards on Flory Lane. Uh, it's 9 to noon. And as always, the EAC is going to be holding a, um, a food drive, so bring uh, you know, non-perishables uh, non for the Interfaith Food Cupboard of Abington. Um, uh, I also, uh, I was uh, unfortunately late tonight due to an emergency, but I wanted to uh, very much thank uh, Commissioners Zappone and Gillespie for uh, honoring Woody. Um, Woody is a, uh, is a wonderful Ward 11 neighbor, and uh, I just wanted to just quickly share um, all the, the great memories. I mean, everyone associates his, uh, you know, his, his uh, cheering at events and his friendly face uh, every day at the senior high. Um, but uh, I have such wonderful memories of Woody uh, always sending us off and being there to greet us um, on my wife's uh, German exchange. Whenever we'd uh, get, you know, get the kids on the bus to go to the airport, uh, Woody would be there, uh, you know, wave, waving us off, holding a sign. And then when we'd uh, come back, even if it was late at night, there would be, uh, there would be Woody uh, greeting us, holding the, the German and American flags. So uh, Woody is a really a wonderful Ward 11 neighbor, and we love him. Um, and finally, uh, Commissioner Weingrad, welcome, sir. I really look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Carswell. I just want to say thank you to our newest volunteer, and best of luck. I've got just a couple of weeks, now almost months ahead of you. So um, welcome to the club. There's a good group of people here. Thank you. Commissioner Schreiber. I'll add my welcome and um, look forward to working with you. No further comment. Thank you. Commissioner Myers. Uh, I would also like to welcome Commissioner Weingrad. This is the beginning of a great new adventure. Um, you're going to learn a lot in a short amount of time. So, and congratulations. Um, I I'm, I'm also would like to congratulate Barbara Wertheimer for continuing her long, many years on the Zoning Hearing Board. Um, she's been a real asset for all of those years, and um, I'm very glad that she will be continuing on that board. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Brodsky. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioner Weingrad, welcome aboard. Good luck with the adventure. And no further comment. And Everybody have a happy President's Day and a good Valentine's Day. Thank you. Commissioner Drew Rothman. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to uh, my wife and our little baby girl. Uh, first time that uh, I have a little baby girl at home for Valentine's Day, so that it, was, it was a regular day. Um, <laughs> just being honest, um, but I love her. Um, we were talking before. It's, uh, it's just amazing how awesome uh, your police uh, department is. Uh, every single person they get up there, the, the resume is just, it's off the charts. Uh, everybody is good at public speaking. It's, it's, it's amazing. So keep up the good work, all of you, and congratulations, uh, Lieutenant. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Jimmy DiPlacido. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, I'd also like to welcome Commissioner Weingrad. Um, so, sorry you lost the bet. Um, you'll be all right. As ward neighbors, we'll have some fun. And uh, also, happy Valentine's Day to my sweethearts at home right now. And um, oh, I also want to thank uh, Angelo. On behalf of all the uh, uh, Ward 4 neighbors, thank you for pushing away all that sludge and slush those last two days. It was very helpful. We pr really appreciate it. And uh, when you're driving through Abington, please drive like your kids live here. Thank you. Commissioner Weingrad. Uh, President Luker, 
I am honored and thrilled to be sitting here as a member of the, the Board of Commissioners. Um, I acknowledge that State Representative Ben Sanchez leaves with big shoes to fill, um, and I look forward to serving the residents of Ward 7 and working in the best interests of the entire township. Um, President Luker, members of the board, um, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Well done. Commissioner Thompson. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the residents of Ward 6 for coming out to a very productive uh, discussion on January 30th. It was great to meet with everybody and, and discuss some of the inner workings of the township. Um, I'd also like to thank, as part of that, the uh, township administration that showed up that night. Um, so Andy, Angelo, and uh, Chief Malloy, and a number of others that were there. Uh, it was really great to have you there, and the, uh, our, the residents really appreciated your input during that meeting. So thanks to everyone for coming out to that meeting, and uh, Angelo, Props to you because uh, I noticed a couple positive comments about the snow plowing in this last storm on Facebook. So keep up the good work. Um, and then Commissioner Weingrad, welcome to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Klein. Thank you, President Luger. Uh, congratulations, Commissioner Weingrad. And I look forward to working with you as another neighbor of your ward. Um, anytime I could be available to help, uh, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, with that, no more other comments. Thank you. Thank you, and in closing, Welcome aboard, Commissioner Stuart Weingrad. Did a tremendous job in your first comments. Thank you. And lastly, um, Manager Manfredi, I like the fact that the staff is closer and visible, and I like where they're sitting. I don't know if they like it, but I like it. <laughs> and I think the board likes it. I think it's a, a, a positive move. I like it. They're closer to us so they can share in the uh, the, the, the festivities. Well, so with that, I'll President entertain Luker, a motion to adjourn. Oh. If I may. Yes, sir. Um, that was on them. That was where, on where them. They, they're free to sit wherever they like. And I, we talked about reconfiguring this area, which we still may do in the future. But more importantly, uh, the new configuration, I, I can take no credit for the new configuration here. So well, I understand, of the chairs, that is. I understand it was the brain trust of one of our commissioners. Yes, so. Uh, do, do you mind giving credit where credit's due? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Commissioner Jimmy DiPlacido, thank you very much. So everyone, with that, thank you for attending. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned.